So I'm Battista Biggio from the University of Cagliari, Italy, and I'm going to present here yeah, this joint work with Blaine Nelson and Pavel Lasko from the University of Tübingen, Germany. The title is Poisoning Attacks Against Supervector Machines. And uh, this work deals with the application of machine learning techniques in, in adversarial settings, which is the research topic I've been pursuing for uh, last couple of years, I would say. <coughs> And um, it's quite interesting because machine learning is increasingly being used in computer security tasks, such as spam filtering, network intrusion detection, and many others. But uh, however, and unfortunately, these, um, these algorithm, algorithms are <coughs> not uh, designed to take into account that intelligent and adaptive adversary may attack the system at operation phase. So, in some sense, this raises several open issues to address, and uh, <coughs> one is precisely to understand the vulnerability of these algorithms to attacks, to potential attacks that may be incurred. So, for instance, consider uh, the case depicted here in the slide, where we have an intrusion detection system monitoring some network traffic, and this IDS has the ability of blocking some suspicious network packets flowing on the networks, on the network traffic, and uh, let's assume also that this system can be retrained on some data which can be collected from the network in an unsupervised fashion. So, can be retrained using this data collected from the network. And in this case, what can happen is that uh, an adversary may design some specific network traffic that will be further used to learn the intrusion detection system with the goal of forcing this system to uh, block some, for example, some legitimate requests to the network. So basically forcing the IDS to cause a denial of service attack. And this is what we call a, a poisoning attack to, to a learning algorithm. So in this paper, we, we investigate this kind of attacks against support vector machines. And so the goal of the adversary is to maximize the classification error, uh, so to cause this denial of service, by basically injecting points into the training set. And we'll focus now just on the insertion of an, a single attack point, X into the training data, under the assumption that the adversary knows pretty much everything about the classifier, so including the training data used to learn the classifier and the decision function whatsoever. And so this may be not a kind of strong assumption in many real applications. Uh, this gives us an understanding of the worst case scenario and, and kind of upper bound on the classification error that, that one may achieve. So the question is, given that we learn an SVM of some clean training data, and we got some classification error, say, for example, 2% on some separate testing data, where should we put uh, the attack point to cause the maximum classification error uh, on this testing data. So if you think, let's think of the red class as the attack class. And for example, if we put a point, the attack point over here in the feature space, we notice that I mean, when this point is learned by, uh, by the SVM, the, the decision boundary tilts a little bit counterclockwise, and the classification error grows up to almost 4%. Now, so since the question is where to place this point to maximize that function, we can think of that point as a free variable, and we can estimate the classification error for each location of the attack point and show, show it in color so that we build basically this plot, this colored plot, and this is um, basically the function that we aim to maximize. And so by looking at this plot, for example, we discover that this is the best location where, where to put the attack point. Clearly, we want to maximize this function without doing this kind of exhaustive search into the feature space that, it, that is quite inefficiently inefficient. So uh, what we do is, uh, for mathematical convenience, we choose to maximize a surrogate loss function. So as, as typically done for SVMs, we choose the inch loss function. <coughs> and uh, we maximize this inch loss on a separate validation set uh, just to avoid adding some other regularization term uh, 
to the error function to, to that is considered. So without going into technical details, so the idea is to find a point that maximizes this function, and we will do that using a gradient ascent uh, attack strategy. So we start from an initial attack point, xc, and we iteratively modify the attack point by taking small steps uh, in the gradient direction. So what we require to compute here is the gradient of this function, the loss function here. Uh, since the loss function is not differentiable in this point, we just consider uh, the points in the validation data that, gives, that give um, a positive contribution to the inch loss, so this point here, and then we can just take the derivatives of this g function, which is called the margin condition. Yeah? So it's the label of the given point xk in the validation data uh, times f of xk, which is the discriminant function of the SVM, so basically the distance of xk to the decision hyperplane, minus 1. And if we take the derivative of this, this function here, we got this expression. Now, without going too much into details, uh, as we don't have much time, what we notice here is that to be able to compute this function in closed form, so analytically, we must understand how the SVM solution changes when we slightly perturb the XC point into the training data. So while, we, while we're basically shifting XC into the training set, we want to know how the alpha values and the bias of the SVM change. And to solve this problem, we resort to a trick from which is quite common in incremental SVM. So we know that the SVM partitions the training data into three sets. So we have the margin support vectors, which are those points precisely lying on the margin here, for which gi is 0 and their alpha value is between 0 and c. Then we have the set R of reserve vectors, who are classified with eig margin, and for which alpha is 0, and the set of error vectors, which are allowed to violate the margin, though not necessarily being uh, classification errors. So gi is negative, and alpha i is equal to c. So the assumption here is that during the update, during the shift of xc in feature space, these three sets uh, do not change. And this implies the following conditions. So the alpha value for the reserve and error vectors is, has to be kept fixed. So uh, either it has to be 0 or, uh, or c. And so we impose that the, it, these derivatives are, uh, have to be equal to zero. Similarly, the margin condition, gi for margin support vectors, has to remain constant. So as to must uh, be equal to zero before and after the update. And further, also this balance condition here has to uh, be equal to zero. So it implies this, that also its derivative has to be zero. Well, by working a little bit with these expre expressions, we end up by uh, writing this linear system of equations in matrix form. And uh, this precisely tells us how the SVM solution changes when the point xc is modified into the training data uh, under the constraint that these three sets do not change clearly. So only the bias and the alpha value for margin support vectors can change. Now, uh, we can find the analytical expression for both these terms, these matrices here, by using the matrix block inversion formula and doing some, some manipulation. And eventually, uh, we can replace the terms in the original expression and end up with this gradient equation. Yeah? Now, the only things that, so this is clearly a full closed form for the gradient. And, and the, um, the point now, the only thing that changes are these kernel derivatives here uh, that clearly depend on the kernel function that we choose. So um, we, are, we, we can now state the algorithm. It, it's a typical gradient ascent algorithm. So in this case, it takes as inputs the training data, validation data, the label of the attack class and the attack point, the initial attack point x is 0, and the gradient step size t, and outputs the attack point xc. So initially, we uh, 
we learn the SVM, the training, on the clean training data, and initialize the attack point. Then we iterate and, and until we reach some local maximum of the function. And during this loop, uh, we basically update the SVM solution to incorporate the attack point. And this can be efficiently done using incremental SVM devised, for example, by uh, the one devised, for example, by uh, Kovenberg and Poggio uh, at NIPS 2001. And after we update the solution, we can compute the gradient, update the attack point, and eventually return the attack point. So uh, in the case of a linear kernel, this is how the derivative of the kernel look like, looks like. And we just can plug this derivative into the gradient equation that we've seen before to, to compute it. And this is basically an exemplary run of the algorithm where, it, where we initialize the attack point somewhere in the blue class. And you can appreciate how the um, gradient ascent works and climbs the and climbs the error function here. So this is the inch loss depicted in cores. And basically, this is the same plot using the classification error. And this shows that the approximation is, is quite reasonable uh, in this case. Uh, um, another thing that we did here is to use this box constraint to enforce the point to stay in some region around the, the training data yeah? and not to go uh, far away. So this is an example using a nonlinear kernel. Clearly, our method can be used in the nonlinear case as well, uh, where we just need to recompute these kernel derivatives, plug in them into the gradient equation, and run the algorithm again. And this is, again, another example where the initial attack point reaches, after the update, um, a local maximum of the inch loss function, which, in, which turns out to be the global maximum for the classification error in this case. So this was kind of lucky case. Um, let's go to see some more experimental result. <coughs> we ex we may made some experiments on the MNIST digit data set, uh, where we consider a linear SVM. And the features here are basically, each feature is the gray level of a pixel in the images. And in this case, we want to, di to dis discriminate between the two classes. Uh, one is the, four, the class of four, di the digit four, and the class of the zero digit. And so we have 784 features because these are 28 by 28 images. Uh, we, have, we consider 100 training points, 500 validation points, and 2,000 uh, uh, testing points. And the, uh, our ATA class here is zero. So the red points uh, belong to the zero class. And uh, what we do is to initialize the attack point to be uh, a point in the attacked class. So a, a point we just do kind of label flip in the attacked class. So let's assume that this image of four here is, a, is labeled as, z as zero. And we run the attack then. And you can notice that the effect of the, the, the final, on the final attack point, we can notice this blurring effect on the digit that somewhat tries to resemble the zero class over here, if you can appreciate that. And what is most interesting to note is that uh, the, testing, the classification error, in particular the testing error, raises from almost a perfect classifier up to 20%, just, using a single, just adding a single point to the training data. <clears throat> then we also consider uh, some greedy attack strategy. So we put the first attack point in, and then we just continue adding points using this greedy strategy. And in this case, uh, you can appreciate how the testing error increases just using a small number of attack points in the training data. We, can, we are able to reach almost 40% of, of the testing error. And this clearly, I mean, this, this point has such a huge impact on, on this, in this case, <coughs> because, um, because we are basically using few training points with respect to the number of features. So it would be interesting to understand what happens when, you, when we have 
a more densely populated training data, and then perhaps investigating this aspect more theoretically. Uh, <coughs> so switching to the conclusion, uh, we showed that uh, the SVM classifier may be very vulnerable to poisoning, so we showed that in, in the worst case scenario, and it would be interesting to test our, algor our algorithm in the case of more realistic scenarios, for example, when the adversary doesn't have the perfect knowledge of the training data, but he can sample, he can draw some data from the same distribution, learn a classifier copy, and attack the copy using, using this algorithm. And yeah, another question is, how can we improve the SVM robustness against this kind of attack? So against poisoning, and we can discuss this later at the poster session. We have poster number 12 at the informatics forum later. So I think I'm done. If you have questions, thank you. <laughs>